Hi, welcome to my channel, Math Made Easy with Laurel. I'm Laurel, and in this video, we're going to talk about pressure. The definition of pressure is always force over area. Units are typically pressure in pounds per square inch, which means force is measured in pounds, and area in square inches. If you're dealing with metric units, the base unit for pressure in the metric system is Pascal, and it's defined as the force of one Newton over an area of a square meter. It's a fairly small pressure because a Newton is about the force that an apple exerts, and a square meter is a very large area. So you probably won't see Pascals used very often. You'll typically see kilopascals. So a kilopascal would be like a thousand apples over a square meter. It's still smaller than PSI. There are approximately 6.89 kilopascals in one PSI. However, I want to focus just with the standard units when I talk about pressure. Let's write the formula without the units. Often you're going to be calculating different values and I just want to show you how you can manipulate the formula to isolate any one of these values. So if we wanted to solve for force, the way that we isolate force is we multiply both sides by area. So if I multiply this side by area and this side by area, I would get force will equal pressure times area. And if I need to solve for area, in order to isolate area, I'm going to divide both sides by pressure. So area will equal force divided by pressure. So those are our three formulas depending on which values I know and which value I'm trying to find. Let's do a couple of examples, one where we'll find pressure and one where we'll find force. So if you know that the force is, let's say, 100 pounds and the area is, let's say, 25 square inches, pressure, which is equal to force over area, will be 100 pounds over 25 square inches which is four pounds per square inch. That's all. And if I had an example where I knew the pressure, 30 PSI over an area of two square inches, then force will equal pressure times area. So 30 pounds per square inch times two square inches gives me 60 pounds. Be aware of your units because I often see students get pressure and force mixed up. They say it's a pressure of 60 pounds. No, 60 pounds isn't a pressure, it's a force. A pressure has to be a force per area, so pounds per square inch. Just be aware of your units and I think that might help you stay on track. Often you'll be working with water pressure and I want to show you a shortcut if you are. If we were to take a cubic foot of water it would have a force or a weight of approximately 62.4 pounds. So let's calculate the pressure exerted on the base of this solid. Pressure is equal to force divided by area. So the force will be 62.4 pounds. Over an area of, we have one foot which is 12 inches by one foot which is 12 inches. So the area of that base will be length times width. So it will be 12 inches times 12 inches, which will be 144 square inches. Got to be, you know, you've got to be careful with units. It's pounds per square inch, so our area has to be in square inches. So our area is 144 square inches. If we were to divide 62.4 by 144, we will get 0.433 pounds per square inch. So the pressure that that water is created on the base of this container is 0.433 pounds per square inch. Now if I took another cubic foot of water and put it beside this one, I'm doubling the weight or the force, but I'm also doubling the area. 
so the pressure on the base would still be 0.433 pounds per square inch. But if I took a cubic foot of water and put it on top of the other cubic foot of water, I've doubled the force, but I haven't doubled the area, so the pressure would be double. And in fact, what we, what we understand is that it wouldn't matter how large or how small our container is. If we filled it to a depth of one foot, it would create a pressure of 0.433 pounds per square inch. I could fill a room full of water to a depth of one foot or a small container to a depth of one foot and the pressure on the base would be the same. So what we end up doing is using that height of one foot and understanding that that will create a pressure of 0.433 pounds per square inch. And that becomes very useful when we're doing calculations with fluid velocity. You don't always want to calculate the total volume, then the weight, then the area and divide. We can take this shortcut where all we need to work with, if it's water, is the height. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. So if we have a column of water, let's say in a pipe, that is 30 feet high, we want to calculate the pressure exerted on the base of that by this column of water. So I'm going to use direct proportion. Direct proportion works very well. The more height, the more pressure. If I double the height, I double the pressure. So the way I'm going to set up my direct proportion, I'm going to put the height over the pressure. You can put your values in any order. The key is putting them in the same order on the other side. So if I go height over pressure, I need to put height over pressure on the right side. So I've got 30 feet and I want to know how many, how many PSI. I put units in initially just to make sure my units are consistent, but you can drop them or write them without. So 1 over 0.433 will equal 30 over x. We cross multiply and we get 12.99 psi. Let's do an example where we know the pressure and we want to find the height. The next example says what height of water is needed to create a pressure of 25 psi? So again, we're going to use direct proportion, one foot over 0.433 psi will equal, we don't know the height, so that will be our x, to get 25 psi. The nice thing about proportion is you don't have to think about whether you multiply or divide by 0.433, your proportion tells you. So we can drop our units, we're going to cross multiply, we get 0.433 times x, 25. So to solve this, we're going to divide both sides by 0.433. So 25 divided by 0.433 will be 57.7 feet. Now there is another shortcut that I've seen uh, students and instructors use for water pressure. Instead of one foot is 0.433 pounds per square inch, and that is 2.31 feet is one PSI. So you can use this one or this one, but still use direct proportion. If I were to use this, I would have 2.31 feet is one PSI. So in this example, I wanna know how many feet to get 25 PSI. Cross multiply, X is equal to 57.8 feet. Slight difference in answers, but that's because this number is rounded off and so is this number. So when you use a rounded off number to do multiplication or division, you're not going to get exact answers. So whether you use this shortcut or this shortcut, you should get close to the same result.